I take accelerated geometry rather than CP geometry. And I gotta tell you, I so these are all my students I had last year in algebra one. And I would say, so I have one here, let's see. This kid had me last year and repeated with another teacher in the same class. So he went from a 39 last year first semester to an 81 first semester. Here's a student that never showed up, went from a 27% to repeat the class to get a 56%. Here's a student who had repeated the class, went from a 55% to a 70%. So those are just kind of the re repeats of Algebra 1. Of then, Algebra 1. And then we have some of these. So this is on to geometry. This kid had an 85 with me, had an 82 in CP geometry. 73 with me, 63 in CP geometry. 66 with me, 81 in CP geometry. So they woke up. Um, just kind of going through the list a little bit. 66, 81. So the first score will be me, first semester, and first semester. In Here's one, 76 with me, first semester, got a 79 first semester in CP geometry. Here's a 70 with me, that went to a 65 in CP geometry. Had an 80 with me, went to a 72 in CP geometry. Had an 86 with me, went to an 82 in CP geometry. Had an 82 with me, has an 82 in CP geometry. Went from an 87 with me to a 70 in CP geometry. Went from a 60% with me to a 36% in geometry. Went from a 74 with me to an 81. Now we're starting to get a little better. Went from an 86 with me to a 91 in geometry. Went from a 60% with me to a 46% in geometry. Uh oh, I'm downswing. Went from a 70% with me to a 62% in geometry first semester. Uh, went from a 90% with me to an 86%. Went from a 73 with me to a 71%. Went from a 91% with me to a 92%. Went from me with a 97% to a 97% in geometry. Went with 63% for me to a 50% in geometry. 36% with me should not have taken geometry, but earned a 45% in geometry. Uh, 74% with me, 77% geometry, 60% with me to a 49% geometry, 80% with me to an 85% geometry, 80 with me, 80 in geometry, 86 with me, 83 in geometry, 70 with me, 64 in geometry, 80 with me, 95 in geometry. I don't know. 80 with me, 80 in geometry, 87 with me, 80, 84 in geometry, 80 with me, 90 in geometry, 70 with me, 71 in geometry, 80 with me, 96 in geometry, I already did that, 52 with me to a 73 in geometry, and then the last ones are 70 with me, 70 in geometry, 66 with me, 63 in geometry, 73 with me, 73 in geometry, 83 with me, 93 in geometry, 76 to 81, 71 to 66, 72 to 61, 64 to 74, 82 to 83, 77 to 96, really? Wow. Um, 70 to a 93, 94 to 100% in geometry, 71 to 61, 80 to 68, 83 to 86, 61 to 61, 39 to 67. And that was actually... I take it back. That person got a 39% with me. We moved that person back to the integrated, which is the one class under us. They went from a 39% with me to go to a lower class the following year to get an 83%. And then. Wait, the is integrated like last year's math? Yeah, it's kind of, it's one level below this one. I thought last year's math was harder than yeah. this year's math. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then my last two students that I had, they withdrew from Creek for whatever reason. So, so my point in sharing that information with you, not 
you know, divulging oh. uh, the students, not divulging students' names. Um, what class should you go to? Well, you heard some kids did a little better, and you heard some kids did a little worse. Okay. Um, in my opinion, a student that would go from this class to accelerated geometry probably would look at a 10 to 15 percent drop in a grade because of the pace of the class. So I don't, I just don't know if that would be the ideal thing for a student to do. You know, why put yourself, if you're comfortable in this situation here, why not stay in the same comfortable with confidence situation next year? Um, you know, you, you'd have to be, I mean, I had a kid last year, he had a 97% with me. And I didn't refer him on, and he has a 97%, so should I have referred him on? I don't know, maybe. But it was also one of those where it was just kind of my judgment call. Hey, what page was the homework last night? 21. 21? Cool. And we did all the odds, right? Yes. Was there any questions on any of the evens that you wanted to take a look at? No? Yeah, eight. Eight? Yep. So problem number eight. Problem eight is 3R plus six, this one, and 4R plus five. Okay, so let's just warm up with this. I'm gonna multiply here and here, and here and here, so that's gonna give me 12R squared plus 15R, and then here, here, and here, here, so plus 24R plus 30. Is that okay? We do have these like terms here, so combine those. Uh, looks like it be 39R plus 30. There you go. Any other of the evens you'd like to take a look at? Good. Will you make sure your name is on that and pass it on forward? And if you're passing anything else in, please make sure your name is on that as well. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Here. Thanking you. Thanking you. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, that's a magic teacher being like that. Dude, dude, that's what some of my teachers do, though. Really? Yeah, yeah, Miss Flatten. Oh. Over here, bro. Worst teacher. Oh, I don't know what she teaches. Science. Science. I had her last. Year. Yeah, she came from Kansas. Miss Flatten. You know. She teaches at Kansas. Like so. This, this is one thing I've, as a teacher, so I was given this advice my very first year by a guy named Ed Baycheck, who was a physics teacher. And he and I, our classrooms were right next to each other at our school. And we actually, between our two classrooms, we had on the front part of it were restrooms, which, you know, that was just going from the hallway. But then behind the restrooms was an office. And so we shared an office. And I remember his words to me when I first started teaching, brand spanking new. He said, he said, Chris, because my name's Chris. And he said, you have to understand, if you're the one who's getting older, the kids will always be the same age. Uh, huh. and I kind of, you know, like, it was one of those things where I heard it originally, and then, you know, 23 years later, it still resonates with me going, yeah, I'm the one who's getting older. So when people are like, ah, oh, these kids. Yeah, it's because you're getting older and you're not realizing that the kids are the same. So kids have been the same all the way through my career. You're kids. So it saddens me when I hear if someone's not happy with, or, you know, collecting homework and someone hands it in five minutes too late. Uh -huh. So what? 
You know, yeah, it's like, it's like it's the like sun will still come up over it. there and set over there whether the homework came in. And then she puts on like her smart aleck voice and she's just like, well, you're supposed to turn it in. Right, you came through the door. And you did my it. my <laughs> absolute favorite, my favorite thing to just give teachers grief about is I give my kids two bathroom passes a semester, and if they don't use them, they get extra credit. And I'm like, I hate that. why would you do that to a kid? You know, here, here's a little, okay, I teach the med class, so I understand human anatomy very well. Do you want to know what the last thing to develop on people is when they grow? A bladder. Bladder. So, so here, here's this, this silly thing, and, and this might have happened to any of you, and I don't need to know, it's not our business, but there might have been a time when you were in middle school that if you laughed real hard, you might have peed a little bit, and it's because your bladder is still that of an eight-year-old while you're sitting there in a 14, 13, 14, 15-year-old's body that's, you know, growing. It's just this weird, funny thing of, yeah, let's... Let's take somebody who normally would produce this much urine, and we're going to keep their bladder this size because we're going to make them bigger. So, you know, incontinence is something that happens to kids. You know, of course, it's an embarrassing thing for kids, but, you know, what if it happened to you or not, there's nothing wrong with you. It's, you know, developmentally, that's what you're doing. Yes. We should pee in class. Hey! Hey, uh, I was wondering what the homework is for today. Oh my gosh, it's page 21. Where are you going? Find that Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, the next page. Am I missing it? Page 23. Well, I need to read it. Don't watch the video. Okay. Cool. Peace out. So, you know, that's just kind of, you know, the little silly things of life, but there's things that if you were that kid, that would be one of the most embarrassing parts of life of, oh my gosh. And you Being socially nice. might not have wanted to associate with people because you... I had that problem. But I mean, that's just, uh, it's part of life. Um, but I just, it makes me laugh when people say, yeah, I tell the kids they can have this many home, you know, do kids in this class go use the restroom? Yeah. Is there, is there a big problem with it? I don't know. I do, do, do some of you use the restroom right around the same time every day? Yeah. Are you always using the restroom? It makes you normal if you're probably out in the hall BSing with each other. Um, you know, it's, that's just that's just life. You know. Oh, you got. It. But I, I mean, I think all of you would probably probably admit there's a pretty good relationship in this class of what we're doing. And is anyone missing an ungodly amount of math because at 12:30 each day someone uses the restroom, and then at 12:32 someone else goes to the restroom. So what? You don't have to go to pot. You have to go potty. It's normal. Time to go potty. Did I do enough? I think. Okay. Oh, we're ready. Oh, uh, one big thing before I teach. And this is a pretty simple lecture. I just want to give you a little bit of a flow chart of what's to come after CP Algebra One. Okay, so after this class, you should take CP Geometry, and then after CP Geometry, you take CP Algebra wow. 2, and then, then you kind of have a lot of choices. So we have a full year-long stats class. It's called Stats Analysis. It's a really good class, okay? Or, and you can even double this up if you wanted to, or you can take college algebra, which is a one semester course, and you get college credit for it. And then if you take college algebra, usually you'll take, uh, we do have a, half, a one semester stats class as well, or we have a trig half semester class. But if you happen to take the trig, we also have a business calculus class that you can take. So these are, our, these are all one semester courses so after that, or after you get done with this, you know, what what other options should you do? Well, that's basically it. 
Could you take AP stats? And the big question is... That is an option on the four-year plan. Yeah, this is a good option. I would tell you, once you get to this point, if you want to look at taking AP stats to get AP credit, which it's a great class, it's a tough class, but if you have good reading comprehension and writing skills, it's a good class to take. If you're still someone who can't form a sentence, there's a lot of writing you do in AP stats because you're you're taking on the data, you're saying that it's good, you're writing conclusions to data. It's a great class, it really is, but you know, those are just a few of the options. You know, what what should you do? Well, your education's your education, so don't throw away any of that. Say, I'll take it. Get everything out of it you can. Does this path, any of the path right there mean you're not going to college? No. You can go to college. You can be very successful. Can you take math in college? Sure. Okay, can I still be a doctor? Yes. Well, I heard you had a 4.0 since you were two years old and speak 15 languages. <laughs> no. So, I mean, work hard, do what you can, do the best you can. That's, that's, that's the moral of that story. Wait, are you required to take math to work? So if you plan on going to a four-year four year university, they require four Carnegie credits of math, which are four years of math. Oh, so, so since those are semesters, does that mean I have to take two? You would take two of them, okay. yeah. Um, if you just plan on going to like Arapaho Community College or Aurora Community College or any community college, you only need three years of math. But then you would get there and you would take a math and then you could transfer to a four-year school. Okay. And what a lot of students don't know about community colleges or junior colleges, sometimes they're called depending on what state. If you take classes there, you're satisfying your freshman and sophomore year and then you transfer to a four-year university to finish your junior and senior year in college. A lot of people think, oh, if I go to a community college then I have four more years to do it. No. You do your freshman year at CU, you do it at Arapahoe Community College. And you do your sophomore. Year. I have two students. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Excuse me. Yeah. This is like completely off topic a little bit. But how come whenever you sneeze, your heart stops? And do you know why? It's like, just it's just a fluctuation in here. Oh. Because you have a impact. Your heart stops too if you jump. If you like jump from like here to here, you know, off of you know, not jump up and down. But if you did it like jumped off, I don't know, like a wall that high. So you're right. witnessing like a really short Well, you, your attack. heart, your, your heart, your heart's just doing this. It's doing this, and then you shock it, and it's like just keeps going. The electro in your body. Dang. It's kind of a pyloric wave that takes place. It's kind of all right. Let's uh, let's kind of talk about these. These are uh, these start of the notes. Down. So if I were to multiply this and this. Do you all feel comfortable that I get this plus 2x? And then if I multiply here and here, I get minus 2x minus 1. Does that seem okay? And so these cancel each other out, so I wind up with this. Okay? So did this? do these look like the same binomials with one sign changed? Yeah. Yeah, I have a 2x, a 2x, I have a 1 and a 1, I have a negative and a positive. Same thing here, I have a 3x and a 5. One has negative, one has positive. If I do the same thing on this one, get in the order of 9x squared minus 15x plus 15x minus 25, those cancel out. There's my answer. Okay, if I do this last one, I'm going to get y squared minus 2y plus 2y minus 4. Those cancel out. Is there a pattern? Yeah. Here, I'm just going to give you this answer right here. Why can I jump right to that, you think? Well, if I do my a times... 4, I get 4a, and if I go negative 4 times a, I get negative 4a. Positive 4a and negative 4a are 
Nothing. Shortcut this one, see if you can do it. So 4x times 4x is 16. 16x. Give it a second. Squared, good. Minus 49, done. Okay, so these are the exact same binomials with one sign difference. So what's this one going to be? 4z. 4z, help me. Squared. Squared. Minus 36, done. So if you recognize that you have two binomials that are the same with one sign difference, so one positive, one negative, the middle terms fall out when we multiply them. So this is called the difference of two squares. Okay? So, what do we notice? Okay? Huh. So sometimes these might have a little shortcut. Ready? Oh, it's called the difference of two squares. So this is the general form of two binomials that are the same with one sign changed and what happens to it. So you have a shortcut that you create if you recognize, oh look, they're the same two binomials. One of the signs is a subtraction sign. Okay, try that. Let's see if you can get those. Try it the quick way. Excuse me, I don't know why. My allergies kicking in. I don't think I'm getting a cold. Feel all right? Hello, Miss K. Hi, sorry to interrupt. You're fine. But can you go brush my knees real quick? Oh, brush my knees. If you the two sheets that are hanging on my uh -huh. thing, you'll see. Yeah, you'll see the dates. I think it's five thirty and seven. Our freshman boys game should be five thirty, okay. and then sophomore um, game should be seven, and then the girls' C level is at seven. Okay, I think that's right. Okay, come in at any time, coach. All right, can I move on? Any question? Yes, ma'am. But they have a sign that's different. Yeah. So, so things that you've probably seen here, let's just highlight this. I have a, those are different signs, right? If they're both plus or they're both minus, then this shortcut won't work for us. But if you can recognize saying, hey, I have two opposite signs, we're good to go. All right, try those. So I will highlight that we have different signs here and here, but there's something different about those two. So you, I think you can get one and two done pretty quickly. Yeah, no, I know, that's why I underlined them. I said, those are two different. So this, we okay? This? But then, if I go back to this, and I re-multiply it out, Do these cancel out right now? Yes. Negative 3x, negative 3x. If I combine them together, I get negative 6x. Good. So notice that one, they didn't fall out. Right? 
So we don't have the difference of two squares there. Up there, I have the difference of two squares. Down here, I have the exact same binomials, no signs different. If I have this, this is going to give me the same thing as x minus 5 and x minus 5, because I have two of them. Agree? Mm -hmm. Are these signs different? No. No, so things aren't going to fall out. So if I multiply this one, So when you have the exact same signs, things don't drop out like they had. One, two, three, four. Woohoo! We okay? Um, Was that it. that it? We're done? Yeah. Yay, let's go get ice cream. Oh, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. I'm like freezing cold. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Ooh, I get snow cone. Or snow cone. So. What? What? All right, so your homework for tonight, you have the opportunity to start it, is page 23-24. Um, I will caution you on problems 1, 2, and 3. Make sure you distribute. Distribute. Cool? Is it okay? You got some time to work on the homework? Get it done? I don't know. Most people prime themselves to sleep.